Where are the jobs? Nigeria's inability to engage a large proportion of youth meaningfully through job creation has a potential for social dislocation. The dire unemployment situation many graduates and those with advanced education in, in the country face is a cause for national concern. Every academic year, university and polytechnics admit close to 2 million students and produce about 600,000 graduates. According to the research done by student team, it was discovered that 58.9% of HND graduates are unemployed, 49.55% of OND graduates are unemployed, and 39.75% of BSc holders are unemployed. Also, in the discovery, 22.58% of Nigeria women are largely unemployed, which is relatively more than the percentage of unemployed men in Nigeria. This is worrisome as it translates to bogging youthful, energetic unemployment population with no contribution to the economic growth of the country. In reality, both the government and private sector cannot fix the rate of unemployment. At best, they can only create an enabling environment for people with ideas to thrive. The truth of the matter is, for the past couple of years, Nigerians have been sold lies by those unfortunately in government. They tell you we will provide job. No government can provide job. You know, actually, if you check the structure of Nigeria from British rule, colonial rule, you know, the colonial masters, they came to institutional or they came to build institutions. In the process of building institutions, they reached out to young Nigerians, train them, employ them, right? To work for this system. And then eventually when Nigeria became a sovereign state, they continued building more systems which they try so the government was more of the large largest employer of labor rights okay. okay that time e exactly but so, now the, there's a new dispensation we're in a new era things have changed if you're relying on the government to provide job it's not realistic the government just need to provide an enabling environment so that job creators and wealth creators could okay so uh, uh, on that note i'll have to argue and uh, uh, shift a little bit in this agreement with what you said right uh, the colonial master came just like you said, that's, that's fine. However, the societal acceptability of this their education system, it's mad. Okay. That's why I would say, right? And the, the reason being, they actually came knowing that they need development. So you want to construct, you need engineering, engineers, maybe civil engineer precisely, to construct. You know that people who are constructing also, we need safety health, you go to medicine. You know that you need accountability, they speak accountant. You understand? Now, you see uh, uh, law, because there will be disagreement it's in yeah. business. So you have lawyers. These are the key professions that warrant their operational activity at that moment. But what do, you, what, what do we see? Our parents. Our parents are a problem in the education system on, <laughs> on employment. I, I can say that because they now build children, not they did that profession to solve problem. Here we are following something that is already solved, kind of. Is it really solved? It, no, I will tell you why it. I said it's solved. Now we already know that we need these engineers and stuff like that, but they now made these jobs, these professions the professional ones and say they are the preferred choice. Every other profession, oh, okay, they right. are not preferred. Meanwhile, the society has grown beyond just small STEM. level of profession. STEM. You understand? So you now have, on every 1,000 applicants, you have 800 going for this. Then you now have the remaining 200 going for the most important ones. Because I tell you, I give you an example in medicine. You see scientists, they do blood tests. A doctor cannot administer or give you anything if he doesn't have a, a test report. Who are the ones yeah, doing that? The scientists. scientists. The but these laboratory sciences are people you, you look down on. I could call my late dad. No you know, <laughs> uh, uh, for me, I, I think we, we actually have a system that is actually not productive because it's not built in a sense to, create, to solve problems. It's just built in a sense to say, go and recreate another set of people like this. Either they know. We don't even have practical tools. 80% of Nigerian universities or institutions, tertiary institutions, do not have practical tools. That's where you see a mechanical engineer cannot repair his own car. Do you understand? Sure. So th this is where the problem is. 80% of Nigerian graduates are 
unemployable. A common Excel, Microsoft tools that you use to do your reporting, your, you know, and all those kind of things, business reports. All these things people don't know. I saw, I give you an example of uh, someone who was given a job opportunity, quality assurance, all this uh, QA. Like, quantity survey, rather, you know, they do their lineup and write all those kind of things. Can you do this thing on Excel? The person, you said there is no job. This person has job opportunity. Maybe. To even transport yourself from Okini to Abuja, you said I don't have transport fare. No responsibility. So it's not, you get. Now you get there, they ask you that, can you make use of Excel? Because the world is technology, is going technology now. You say, I don't know. Without, you know, without conscience. Without, you don't even feel bad. Yeah, you don't it's know. Okay, it's okay not to I don't up. know. So by the time you, you, you interview a lot of people, you come down and ask them, where is the job? You are not even employable. A first class graduate is not employable. In, some, in a lot of cases, because they come and pour, they are not there to solve a problem. Until we have a, a, a system of education that is completely over our own, we start solving problems and say, if you want to admit, because we need, we, we are building a nation, we need social number of health sector, then we are making provision for people to come and study this course so that they fill in the gap. We need social number of lawyers because we have a lot of cases that we, we are filling. Do you understand? It has to be purposeful. Well, That's I, where I see the problem. I, I, I get your point, Chad, but it doesn't actually, you are right in one instance, but it doesn't actually have to be always in that format. Let me give you an example. Look at what is happening in the UK now. Are you aware that, uh, Michael Gucci, this is your segment, are you aware that uh, the UK government, ending of last year, that's in December, early December, they announced that Nigeria, Ghana, I think some other African countries, they added like few other African countries to some countries they already had that they are looking for teachers. You know, initially it was doctors and nurses. Mm. Now you are aware that our teachers now, they said, if you can, they didn't even say you must have education degree. If you went to the university and What's you can it? teach math, English What's or business, really, just apply. Yeah. And just show them proof that you've taught maybe for one or two years. When you come over, they will they teach sure, you education yeah. and then they teach you how to teach. And I'm like, oh, but this is the same teaching that many people are rejecting it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just like I so said, like, we are talking no, about just like I said, just like I job. said, it's not about government providing a job. It's about government knowing the purpose of the job they are providing. So they see that there is a nakuna in their in their country, and there is need for this set of people, set of skill, right? And they are calling for it. Can you say categorically in Nigeria? Can we attempt this that we need social number of teachers here? We need social number of doctors here. Do you understand what I'm saying? Uh, it has to point. be proposed. But let's, let's look at this embarrassing situation here. Yeah, remember what happened? Was it last two years? Mm. Um, Festo Skiamo. Mm. You know when he was priding that, oh, the Boyer government is going to provide job, blah, blah, blah. He said, okay, provides. Was it 700,000 job? What kind of job did he get? 700,000 job. local government job. Yeah, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. class, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I think I have um, a bit of a different perspective to what you guys have said. Um, I think um, when it comes to uh, employment, they are probably from just two sides, like Hussein rightly mentioned, uh, most graduates are not employable. Most graduates are not employable. Um, however, um, if you look at it, um, I think um, sometimes it's not about just white collar job. Um, I, I think, I think um, we need to look at things from this angle. Yes. We have agreed that um, both government and the private sector, the banks and all of that cannot really give us the number of jobs when you look at the number of graduates being produced every year. Mind you, we should not take also our focus from our view from also the people that are not even graduates, but they are old enough and able men who can do other things, even though they are not graduates. Now, um, the point is this. Uh, if you look at the last uh, topic, taking responsibility, I think um, when it comes to graduate that are not employable, we may want to blame the university system, but if you blame the university system, it means that we are still going to excuse people for not taking responsibility for their own lives. But what we are looking at is, okay, okay, I've been recruiting since 2013, so I think I have a fair share of when I interview people, what it's like. So you see people, oh, I don't have a job, have, I finished service three years ago, uh, what have you been doing? Nothing. 
of value system. So, so I, I think people need to understand that government cannot give you all the job. Not everybody will get opportunity to work in Access Bank. Not everybody will get opportunity to work with Senate Bank. But until people oh, learn oh, that the best way to find the job is to create their own jobs exactly. and give themselves jobs, they exactly. won't understand. I remember when I graduated, what I was doing, I told myself, look, I don't have a job right now, but what I'm going to do is this. So long people go to work, leave the house by 6 a.m., I'm going to give myself a job. And what was that job? I was reading, trying to find my feet in my area of interest. Reading, researching every day. And the good thing is that when opportunity comes, I was supposed to be an intern for uh, six months. Three months, they say I'm good enough to become an associate consultant. That, that was not a fluke. That was not a miracle. It's because somebody took responsibility to prepare ahead. So I think people need to understand, like, look, when there is no job in quotes, the kind of job you are looking for, or you don't have that job right now, your ability to look around and create something for yourself. Because I was speaking with a young guy a few uh, days ago, and I said, look, you keep saying you don't have a job, you don't have a job. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? I can give a story of someone that um, is an um, award-winning, presidential award-winning photographer right now in Nigeria when he was, uh, you know, looking for different jobs and all of that. And I say, guy, what do you want to do? And he said, I currently do graphic design, but I want to do photography along with it. I want to become a multimedia guru. And I said, so what is holding you back? And he said, phones. I can't get camera. I don't know where to get trained. I said, no. When you look at the scheme of setting up a business, fund is not number one. It's probably number five or six. And I said, okay, so how much do you need to learn? He said, I don't know. I need to find out. I said, you can see that the problem has not been found. You have not actually gone ahead out of your way to look for what is required in that space that you want to manage. So guess what? Two weeks later, he was able to find out. And I said, okay, how much do you need? 150,000, and guess what? 150,000 sounds like a lot of money, which it, it is. But the point is, if you take 2,000 away from 150,000, it becomes 148,000. I say, if you, get, if you keep getting that, you'll be able to afford this. I can tell you right now, he's an award, presidential award-winning photographer, and he's doing well for himself. So people need to begin to look beyond government, beyond the MTN you want to work for, beyond the Owandos you want to work for, and create a niche for yourself. It gets to a point, you get so good in what you are doing, you don't look for these companies anymore. They look for you. But, you know, uh, your point is valid, you and, you and Hussein. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you cannot take the fact that a enabling environment needed to be created. Let me give you an example. Um, you know what happened during NSAS? Uh, where the youth were trying to speak their mind and the only way to punish us then was to ban Bitcoin. That is a policy, a blue to fintech. Those guys that were, you know, some of the software, okay, let me, let me go to this tech guy. Let me give you an example. Uh, do you know that there's some software you need to buy to function as a tech guy or wherever you are? Even if you're not a tech guy, you, you just want to use technology, incorporate it in whatever thing you're doing. And there's some softwares or some books or some items you need to get online. To, to help you solve problems here, yeah. you need to buy with your MasterCard. Unfortunately, there is no dollar available. Yeah, you cannot purchase with your MasterCard. You have to look for somebody abroad to buy for you. So some of these policies and this thing is a way, a way caging us. You, so you, like, you, I, I don't believe government can give you anything. Like all these guys coming okay, to campaign. You know, right? like I said, it will be Tinubu, Atiku, Kwakwansu. They will not give you jack. No, like I, like I said, I said, what both do, government with, with job. and the corporate setting cannot guarantee you job. At best, but policies, policies, so, so and policies. I, I, and I, and but I think, I think if you look at our country as a whole, mm. where we are as a, as a nation right now, you don't want to, um, while you're praying and hoping that the best of an embryo environment will be created, you don't want to make excuses. Because the point I'll tell you well, is you that pass, right? if you count five, ten people that are making it in your sector, you ask yourself, what is stopping you? They are working in the same environment. So it has to do with your own intentionality, your mindset of creating an environment within the environment you find yourself. Thank you. Of so course, just, just to add to what both of you have said, right? You see, it boils back to taking responsibility. The policy, I will give an example, budget it. Budget, I don't know, maybe you... Budget, I've had a budget, budget yeah. uh, stuff. <laughs> this guy started as an individual, investing in himself, gather data, analyze those data, I tell Nigerians, it. and tell us this is what it is. If the Nigerian government is doing this, this is the impact. If we don't take this and... This guy was given an opportunity because, yes, he was telling the government that they are not doing things that are expected mm. based on the figures you mm. can see. But he was given an opportunity. But he listening to banter. 
he resigned. Exactly. With. So, you see, we need to take responsibility. Forget social media. At a point, yes, you go against a government, and government says you come. Once they give you that opportunity, you just need a window to change things. Just do the best you, you can. You see, we, we have a system where people go from uh, step one, level one, grade one, all those kind of things. And these people, they are rigid because they are not exposed to the technology that yeah. we are exposed to. These are the people who are making policies for us. And that is why when they make a policy, you have to it shout, work. go back and review because it doesn't work. They make policies that work within their own system. Yeah. Right? Just like what he said, I could recall, is all about taking responsibility, investing in yourself, and trying to solve a problem. I, for once, not think of working for anybody. But I invested in myself. Any opportunity I have, I keep investing in myself and building, getting necessary information to solve these problems. Right? Guess what? I had the opportunity to sit down with a, a, an upcoming uh, uh, a startup fintech. Within 45 minutes, I, I offer myself to solve a problem. The person said no. I said I want partnership because I've never worked for anybody. Hmm. The person said no. You have to come in. You have to start this work. And guess what? I was even offered an open check. Name your salary. Hmm. Tell me how much you want to start with. My first pay job, I was given, like, please, can you manage 300,000 naira? Wow. For a first pay job. So it, it, it looks like, wow. But because I've invested myself, I didn't even see the money. I'm looking at the solution I want to provide. And I know it gradually. If I provide this solution, I will hear more. So I did not look for a job. The yeah, job actually came for looking you, for yeah. me. Because I, I, you were I, prepared I, I, for I it. And another, another thing I would like to add to that is, um, I may not mention the industry or the particular trade, but uh, because a lot of Nigerians, when you mention, oh, pure water business is doing very well, everybody will go that You're direction. Crazy. So I, I, another thing I can say to people it. is, <laughs> you must be aware of your environment. There are opportunities. There are no jobs, but there are opportunities. There are jobs because as an HR professional, I know what it is. Sometimes for me to recruit a customer service person, I'm not looking for somebody with experience. I'm just looking for someone with common sense, someone who is put power. Now, um, a lot of people will say, the reason I've not started this business, I've not done this because I don't have money. I'll give you a story of um, a lady who used to be our uh, front desk officer. This lady when she finished, you know, supervising the cleaners to clean the office and all of that, she sits on her laptop and begins to check for different um, items online. And when she gets to see those items, she'll post it on her, um, on her WhatsApp status. Guess what? When he posted, it, people will say, how much do you sell it? Now, when he noticed that people were, there was traction, what he, she did was to go to the wholesaler and say, look, I want to be helping you to sell this product. And guess what? So they'll, she will take pictures from of the available stock they have and she'll advertise it on so our she now became an online shop it, before before you know what without people, money people without, be, without money without money without product without, without, product, without, money, without, without product. money and people began to order and she will be restocking now she has her own store and i'm telling you i'm not talking about store of two million era She's doing well now. So now we can look at all the negative side of the country. We can exactly. complain all we want. But the truth is the way out of this we are the job is to create a job for yourself. Sure, exactly. I believe so much in that. But you know, because of for the benefit of the coming election, we just cannot help to emphasize the importance of stakeholders meet. Let me give you an example of what I mean. You cannot want to create a policy that will affect young people and you don't want to have meetings with young people. This, some presidential candidates find it difficult to speak to media. Mm -hmm. And they find it difficult to engage different stakeholders, different um, let, 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 let me Hold your thought. Let me you you. So you, you see the pain is that a lot of people will tell you this coming election, this person will win, this person will not win, this person will win. Now, I don't even have issues with who is, who is going to win or who is not going exactly, to win. Exactly. It doesn't change anything. Impact. Yeah. Exactly. Now, what, what I see is this, whether we like it or not, there's been a shift. Uh, the youth yeah. are being uh, getting yeah, more interested, and interested interested in yeah. what happens. So now, I don't see if the next National Assembly comes to play and they say they are doing open hearing for a particular policy, people will hold, um, hold back like they used to do before. We just hear that a policy has been passed in Tola and all of that. Right now, I see people who are ready to go and debate the issue. This, this is really so we just have to keep taking charge we should be responsible as young people for our future 
Mm. Thank you very much, my fellow advocates. The end always seemed to come too soon on the advocates. However, the advocacy continues on our social media platforms. On Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag the advocate ng or on twitter and instagram at plus tv africa hashtag the advocate ng to catch up with previous broadcasts go to plus tv africa.com forward slash the advocate ng don't forget to subscribe to our youtube channel plus tv africa till next week same time on this station let's keep advocating for a better society bye for now and happy new year